screen. There we go. So hello, everybody. Nicole, so happy to be here with you. And as everybody kind of gathers in for this beautiful Facebook Live, we're also recording this on Zoom so that we can put this on YouTube and share this with my community. A lot of people are going to be introduced to you, and I'm really, really excited. So um, I came to know of you because you actually had reached out to me through Instagram and said that you heard me on a podcast and it really inspired you. And when I looked at who you were, I said, wow, you were a revenge body from Khloe Kardashian. She had her show on E! called Revenge Body. And you were one of the uh, fitness experts that helped someone go from start to finish. So that's how I came to know you. But why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Nicole Winhofer. Um, I started out as a dancer um, and then developed this unique IP. So um, through training uh, a lot of artists from Oscar winning actresses to um, pop stars, I created this kind of mind, body, spirit workout that tones your body and um, from the inside out using your chakras. And what's a chakra? It's a wheel, wheel of energy. And we have seven. So I unlock your chakras in seven steps through a workout using music. And um, my philosophy is that health is uh, mind and body connecting together because thoughts become things. And I do that through dance and movement. Awesome. So tell let me, let me ask you a question because we're, we're here kind of discussing the desire factor. It's launching in six days, which I'm super excited about. And I thank you for endorsing it and reading it. And I, I'm looking forward to hearing what you, what you, what your notes were when you read the book, but when you had like, you're building your business and you're working with all these celebrities was working with Khloe Kardashian and being on Revenge Body, was that one of your desire factors or what was your desire factor that led you to getting picked up on that show? Yeah. Um, yeah. I love your book, Christy. I think it makes um, our desires and uh, the law of attraction very practical and tangible and very easy for someone to learn how to make their desires come true. Um, and to answer your question about how I landed on this awesome TV show with Chloe and the E! Um, production team was that after um, training all of these amazing artists like around the world, like 90 city world tours, like movie sets, um, I said, I have something special, like how can I bring this to more people? And I started teaching um, in an underground basement of my apartment building and I grew from one customer to 10,000 customers. And then I said, wow, in two years, this grew, I wanna reach more people. And so for about four months, I was um, meditating on it. I made a vision board. I got really clear that I wanted to bring it to more people. And then the producer from the show on Instagram, just like how we met, uh, reached out to me and said, wow, what you're doing is really interesting. Can I meet you? Later found out it was for Chloe's show flew to LA and got the job. So through the manifestation, I guess, um, I didn't know it was going to be Khloe Kardashian, but I was able to reach more people through scale. Oh, absolutely. Um, one, of, one of my other friends, um, Cynthia Garcia, was also a nutritionist on the show. And so it was really cool to see her you know, her expand and her, cool. her, yeah, you know, to be able to do that. But I, I my husband, and I loved watching that show, not to get revenge on somebody, but the fact that someone had a motivation, had a desire. Sometimes it comes from a place of, you know, not so aligned desire. Like these people wanted to revenge on someone, but what it did, even though it was a desire that came from like a lower place to revenge on someone and not a necessarily divine inspiration, they still changed their body. They still got into the groove of focusing on themselves and like aligning with themselves. And especially the people that worked with you, when you bring in the conversation of energy, because everything is energy, that really shifts people in a very different way. That's not just about eating and exercising. Yeah, and um, through like the chakra system, it's called NW method. Um, what I found was that under this revenge, right, is rejection. No one wants to be rejected. There's anger, there's fear, there's shame, there's grief. It's very like low vibrating consciousness. But the opposite of that is like love and the need to be loved. And so underneath all of that revenge and anger and grief and shame, we, we got rid of those emotions and got to the pure 
place of consciousness and was able to identify long lasting weight loss because we weren't doing a fixed fad diet or just a workout, but from the inside out. Well, and that's just, you know, years ago, I created a program called Creating Your Ideal Body. And it wasn't just about food and exercise. It was more about energy and working with law of attraction. That's literally what you're talking about is that there's a reason people overeat. There's a reason people that, you know, they have this, these vices where they either drink too much or eat too much or do these, you know, drugs or something because they're escaping their emotions inside. Yeah. And when you have it like pushing down what you yeah. did, you know, was so, it was so beautiful to see that not to compare to other nutritionists and, and, you know, fitness experts that were on the show, but you got to the, you got to the crux of it. You got to the emotions of it and to help them release the emotions, the energy that's there so that they can come into this place of like, wow, I can find that love again for myself. Not because that person rejected me or that person didn't love me. I can no longer love myself. It's like, I can find that inner love. I can find that sense of love for yeah. myself, which is all about. So good. I mean, congratulations. Good on you for oh, doing thank that. You. And that's also like, just to tie it back into your book, like what I love about your book is that you make um, wanting something okay. And I, I discovered through working with like a lot of people that sometimes they don't feel like they deserve it or they don't, they shut off their desires, right? And the title of your book is Desire Factor, meaning it's okay to have desires and this is how you're gonna get it. And I love that you own that because like in my workout, I make people own it. I make people own what they want and that they're fierce and amazing and to love yourself. So it's right there in your book and it's super easy um, to digest as well. Awesome. I love, thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to give ourselves permission to have yes. what we want and go for it. And, you know, so many people just block themselves even during the process. And, you know, it was interesting. I know we were sharing before we went live, you know, I've been just totally focused on the, the purpose and the reason for this book and, you know, the goals that I have for it and the desire factor that I have for it as well. And today, you know, I got a notification on, I was looking at Instagram because I was posting my, you know, where I'm like counting down the days, right? So I posted my six today because it's six days away from the launch. And I saw that Oprah has a book that's launching the same week. And I went, <laughs> right. Because I want to hit the New York times again. Right. And it's like, and I don't want to just hit the New York times. I want to go for number one. And so it was like, Oh crap. You know, now I'm, up, now I'm competing with <laughs> Oprah. And it's like, how do you, how do you compete with Oprah? And it was really funny because I, I was getting a tea and I came home and I'm like, babe, you're not going to believe this. Oprah is launching her book the same week. And he goes, it's not about for you. It's not about hitting number one. It's about all the people that are going to read this book and be impacted, like focus on the reason. And I go, yeah, but I had this desire, you know, it was like the human part yeah, of me yeah. was just like, yeah, but now, you know, and I, I felt like depleted and he goes, it wasn't, a, it's about all those people that are going to read the book, no matter how many read it, that are going to have their, per, they're going to have, have themselves give permission to get yeah. this book and, and give themselves permission to have their desires and understand that stuff happens along your desire trail right? And like this, it was like, I had to just process the emotions. And my kids are so funny. My kids are so funny. My youngest son, Maxim, he says, Cute. mom, yeah, he's 10. He's, he's just Cute. adorable. And he says to me, mom, you remember when I had to race Trent, which is his friend who's like super tall, has long legs. He goes, remember I had to race him in the turkey trot a couple of years ago. And I said, yeah, he goes, do you remember what you told me? You told me believe in yourself. And, and I, and he goes, and there's every reason that Trent should have beat me in that race, but you told me to believe in oh. myself. So I listened to you and I believed in myself and I beat Trent and I'm faster than Trent. I believed in myself and that's what it takes. You need to believe in yourself. And then my other son says to me, do you remember what you told me last night when I told you that I had this plan that didn't work out and I was feeling bummed? And I said, no, Alex, tell me what I told you. He said, the divine has a greater plan than you ever have for yourself. God, your kids are amazing. They are. They're listening. I didn't think they were listening. So I turned my, I heard. <laughs> You're I'm like, like, I'm smart. Listening. Wow. I'm a smart mom. <laughs> I'm like, my God. So I turned to my husband and I'm like, 
and, and he goes, see, oh. and I go, it's true. There's good that's going to come out of this. Right. And so um, my desire factor, since I became an author 20 years ago was to be on Oprah right? Hey, if I'm on the New York Times list with Oprah, I mean, she's going to probably pay attention to who I am. So who knows, maybe that'll lead to me going on Super Soul Sunday. But all this to say is that all along our way of creating a desire, no matter who we are, stuff comes in that we need to recognize and go, okay, I'm allowing myself to have this human moment. I went into my backyard, which we have, you know, um, literally a, a wash, it's all desert. And I took a carton of eggs and my kids were like, oh, it's egg time. Cause they know what that means. I took the egg. I felt all of the worry, all of the fear, all of the doubt, all of the frustration, all of everything. I put it in egg. I almost hit someone on a bike that was driving by. I had to wait for them <laughs> to go by. And then I whipped it and it was, you know, and so then they did a couple and my husband did a couple. And here we were as a family, just releasing all of the stuff that we feel is in the way of our desires. And when you surrender, which is one of the principles I talk about in the book, right? It's like when you surrender the stuff that comes up, whew, now I'm like grounded back in whatever happens. You know, it's like, it's, it's all good. I'm, no one can take away the connection that I feel to my own success and the reason that I wrote the book and the reason, the purpose and the passion of, of this desire, right? And so it's, it's like what you're talking about. It's like getting to the, getting to the reason why you're doing something. Why do you want to create your ideal body? Why do you want to get in better shape? Why do you want to come back into well-being? And understanding that there's energies and emotions that are there that may block you, right? Like as you're, as someone's on a food plan, for example, or trying to do a workout, if they keep getting pulled back by an energy imprint, it's important for them to release that energy so that they're moving towards their desires. Yeah, that's beautiful. You make it look so easy, Christy. And you also make writing a book super easy. You know, I'm a first time author. I have an app out. I have products out I'm, you know, with video, but your book and the process and just talking to you before we went live, I mean, you make it look so simple and so easy and, um, I think you draw it back to the why, like, what is the reason why I wrote this book? You're going to help so many people own their desires and make it okay for them to have those desires. And where did the inspiration from your book come from? I mean, I love the title and I just, I, I love, I love the book. Thank you. So yeah. And if you want to go get it, because you can pre-order it right now with lots of bonuses, you could go to thedesirefactor.com. I also have a special for, to tell everybody too. So honestly, I taught, I, you probably read about it a little bit, but what I didn't share in the book is that I was on a cruise ship in the middle of the Mediterranean. And I literally was back on from being in Venice all day. And I had this beautiful Dolce & Gabbana purse that I bought. And I was looking at this purse and I was reflecting on how this purse and the experience that I had that day really was my desire factor and who I had become because rewind seven years prior to that, I was in Italy with my parents, with my husband, boyfriend at the time, and we went to Venice. And it was the first time that I had been in a place where I literally thought I went and died to have, I died and went to heaven. <laughs> like for someone that loves fashion, it was Dolce & Gabbana and Fendi and Dior and Chanel all in one place. And I'm like, you know, like, oh my God, I was like a hummingbird you know, <laughs> zooming into each one. And I'm like, Oh my God. Right. And my husband even said to me back then, I can't afford you. And I'm like, you don't have to afford me. I'll afford myself. And I said, S and so I said to him, I go, you know what? Someday, cause I just started my business. So this is almost 15 years ago. I just started my business. And I'm like, okay, it doesn't make sense for me to buy anything. Not even a t-shirt. Like a t-shirt was like $1,500 at a Versace store. I'm like, why? But I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't at that time justify spending any money in any of these stores. But I told him, I said, someday we're going to come back to Venice. And as a symbol of my success, of all the people that I've helped, of how successful I've become, of all the money that I've made, for everything that I've done and accomplished, I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to go into any store and buy whatever calls to me. And he's like, cool. Right. That was like my intention back then. So here I am. I gifted my mom and my dad, my kids, 
my husband and I, this amazing trip to the Merid- or to Meridian, to the you know Mediterranean. And one of the stops was, was, uh, was Venice. And I told my husband, okay, we're going to have an afternoon. And he was excited for this too, because he was right there when I made that intention. So in the morning we went there, it was my dad's birthday. So we were in St. It was awesome. We were in St. Marco's square with the kids and the kids were like surrounded by all the pigeons and they were feeding the pigeons (laughs) and you know, there was a band that was there and they played happy birthday for my dad. And we were all eating croissants and drinking well, I shouldn't tell you this because you're a fitness expert, but we were eating croissants and, you know, drinking cappuccinos and, you know, (laughs) having, having a a vacation time. And then they all went on to the cruise ship and my husband and I stayed and we went shopping and I went into Dolce & Gabbana and I found this beautiful purse. So here I am later that afternoon, I'm back on the ship. I'm looking at this purse. I'm thinking of that entire journey and literally who I became and just from that intention, from following that desire. Now, I didn't do everything I did because I wanted a purse. I did it because I'm called to help and I'm called to, you know, I, I keep following the light and I'm called to serve. And But there's been thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that have had even just a shift, you know, something, some more than others, but I've helped along the way. And here I am holding this purse as a symbol of success and the voice came in. That is so shallow. And I'm like, what? Like I'm reflecting on this beautiful journey. I'm like, how is that shallow? But it was my sister's voice. Cause even from when I was a little girl, I don't know about you, we would get all dressed up for like Easter and I'd have the little hat. I think I have a picture somewhere. I'm wearing this like yellow and white dress and I've got this little white hat on and I had this little white purse with the little white shoes and I was all, you know, thinking I'm all hot and I'm three, three and a half, maybe four years old. And my sister's like, you're so shallow. Cause that wasn't her thing. Right. You know? And so that imprinted in me that if I like something that's materialistic or that shallow, but, it, yeah. but in that moment, what came through from the council before I even started fooling on channeling them was no, everything is energy, everything. And in order to create any form, any experience, any situation, anything, you have to be a vibrational match to it. And so all energy carries a vibration. That vibration goes out into the universe and gathers stuff to it. Well, what is the energy? The energy is the divine. So isn't that Dolce and Gabbana purse, the divine? Can you think about it? Dolce and Gabbana themselves, they were inspired to create a purse that looks like that. They were, had that life-giving energy through them to be creative, to create that. And now I was a perfect match to it. Doesn't matter if it's a purse or if it's getting on a show like Revenge Body, that's a manifestation in the material world, right? Doesn't yeah. matter if it's a golf club or a golf trip or having a baby or starting a business or starting creating a program or any of the things. Yeah. Because we attract it all by our energy, right? Yeah, I love that. And I think What I learn um, through working with like my clients is, you know, since COVID, I pivoted completely digitally and I have an app now it's called NW Church is the response I'm getting from the customers and my clients is I want this, I want this for myself. And then there's always this block and just like with you um, making it okay to want you know, your divine, which at the time was a Dolce and Gabbana purse, everyone has their own set of divine wishes. Like you said, some of my clients want to open a business. Some of my clients want to get a divorce. Some of my clients want to leave America and go overseas. Some of my clients want to write a book. And there's this block that happens where they have this inspired energy and then they do it for two, three days and then they stop. And then I remind them, hello, And it's like, you need that desire, but you also need that persistence, that persistence to keep going. And just like how you wrote this book, right? Like that is a journey in itself and a process. It's like a finished product. People get to pick up the book and read it, or people get to download my app and, and do the workout. But to get to that place of desire takes ultimate belief in yourself, like your two sons said, (laughs) believe in yourself, believe in yourself and to keep going because it's not easy sometimes like you said things happen we're in life you're launching this book and then Oprah's like I'm launching a book and you're like what 
It's like, haven't I worked hard enough? Didn't I write this awesome book, Desire Factor? Isn't that enough? Can you give me a break? But it's like sometimes the higher you climb, the higher you go, it gets a little bit harder and you have to keep going. So I think persistence is also really important to get people to where they want to be. It is. uh, It absolutely is an important quality. And, you know, it's like when you're connected to the energy, that energy helps you be persistent because there is either moving forward by being persistent. And that's that that, that's something that um, my mom used to say about me is, God, are you persistent? (laughs) And when you're trying to parent that, it's kind of annoying. Right. If you're having (laughs) like if the child's like, but mom, can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have this? Can I have that? You know, it's like if you're constantly being persistent, it's hard as a parent to go, oh, my God, how do I manage this child without telling her to stop? Right. But it is a good quality to go for, you know, totally what you want. And, and, you know, it's like the divine in me just keeps going like, go, go, you know, it doesn't matter what Oprah's doing. It's like, go, you know, keep, keep holding that energy of why you're doing this in the first place. I love that. Yeah. Cause it's like the divine knows its audience, right? The the divine knows that you're going to be, if you get that divine idea to start an app, you're like, Ooh, I love that. That's going to help a lot of people. So you're going to do whatever you need to do to get that app out there and to, and to get it not only created, but to have more people know about it. Right. And, but if it's me, I've had people say to me, Oh, you should do an app. I've actually started apps, but for me, it just, it isn't something that a book. Yeah. Right. And, but for me, it's like, I know the divine knows the audience and the divine knows you know, it, it, it's, go ahead. Christy, how do you, when you talk about the divine, um, for you, or I call mine higher power, how do you tap into the divine and how do you know when it's the divine talking versus maybe your mind or ego or fear or love? Like, how do you, how do you feel that in your body when the divine is channeling, you know, giving you answers? That's a great, great question. Well, first of all, from a feeling place, the divine always feels good and expanded, right? It always feels there's possibility, potential, right? It feels like there's optimism there. There's total faith, like that expansion and like expansion feeling, that's the divine speaking to me, right? When I'm in my, oh my God, you know, like <laughs> the, the fear, like, oh great, all this work, you know, like when I'm in that place, that is not the divine. That is the limited parts of me that still need to be healed, to still need a little bit of love, to still need to understand that there really is no competition. You're creating your own reality, despite what Oprah or anybody else is doing, right? And it's like, that's me having to release that, but it's finding that flow of energy where I'm like, okay, I'm surrendering that, like what I did with the egg, right? I'm surrendering all of this stuff, letting it go. As soon as I did that, I brought in the energy of higher energy, right? Of higher feeling. And it's like, even bringing in the feeling of compassion, because it's like that moment did (laughs) not feel good to see that, right? I was like, oh. And so just allowing myself to feel that compassion then opened me up to higher awareness. And that's when it was like, hey, maybe Oprah's going to pay attention to you because she's going to be looking at that New York Times list that week. Maybe she wouldn't normally be looking at it. She's going to be looking at it because her book's launching that week. So maybe she'll get, you'll get her attention. That's like a divine yes. thought. It's more expansive. It feels good rather than, <laughs> you know, she, she's going to get it and I'm not, right? The competition, like, you know, it's either this or that. It's a very expansive feeling. And that's how I always know where I'm not coming from the limited part of me because the limited part of me always feels bad, but the expanded higher self always feels yeah. good. I love how you're so like human. Like you said, I had a human moment this morning and I think for me too, being like a fitness expert and, you know, professional people think that, oh, you know, she's perfect and she doesn't do this or she doesn't have fun and she's so disciplined, but we're all human. And just like you said, like we have these human moments and it's how you manage them um, to get you through to your desire. And I think um, when people own their humanness and like accept their humanness, then they can move them closer to their desire. And I just love how you pointed out, like, 
your honest morning that you had a moment of that and then now you're in your higher divine so thanks for for sharing that and for being vulnerable because it gives other people permission to you know have emotions and you know be human <laughs> Well, yeah, we're all human. And that's really what the desire factor is about. It's like, it's not suppressing. I mean, there, there's this whole rule of thumb with a lot of kind of gurus and spiritual people that are like, oh, kill the ego. It's like, well, the divine created my personality. My perso personality is what it is. It's different from yours. It's different from every single person. So yeah. the divine loves that. If we didn't all have our unique ego and personality, you know, the, the divine be pretty bored creating the same stuff through each and every one of us, but all of us have our different talents and skills and, you know, preferences and all the things that make us different, different and diverse. And yet it's the limited parts of us, right? It's the limited parts that think, yeah. oh, there's not enough, or I can't have enough. That's what we need to release. And all of us have that because none of us, even, even if you had the perfect childhood, right? There, and you had love and, and I don't know every, anybody that had the perfect childhood, but even if you have, per, you know, those perfect parents that we your all have. Your sons, like, I'm sorry, your sons sound like they have a perfect childhood yeah. with intelligence and wisdom like that. Well, see, even then that's a perfect example. Like we have a very conscious family. They pretty much have everything that they could ever desire for, <laughs> but my son will like, she was having a bad day yesterday because he had a plan. He's going to go to a dance and he is a girl. He wanted to ask to the dance. Oh my God. I know he asked me last night, he goes, mom, can we go get a tuxedo? And I'm like, you, you could wear just a shirt and a tie. He goes, no, I want a tuxedo. And I'm like, oh my God, can you be an incuter? And so I was like, yes, we can get, we can go rent you a tuxedo. So, but he said, but my plan was to ask so-and-so and her, her parents won't let her go to a dance. And so in his mind, his plan didn't work. Right. And so contrast happens for all of us, no matter how great your family life is, no matter how yeah. accessible or resource, you know, you and I work with celebrities and athletes, you know, it's like, we think, oh, their lives are so perfect. They have their own struggles. They have their yeah. own human stuff. They have their own yeah. imprints because you could have literally, I'll give you an example. My son, one night I was kissing him, same son, kissing him good night. And I said, do you know how loved you are? And he goes by you. And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, I don't, dad doesn't love me. And I said, Oh, how could you say that? Oh my God. He loves you so much. Why would you say that? And it was when we were homeschooling, uh, we weren't, my husband was homeschooling them during COVID. <laughs> and he's like, he's so tough on me. I go, you know why he's tough on you? Cause he loves you. And he knows how intelligent you are. And you were kind of just throwing half doing it. And he knows that, you know, you don't want to just halfway show up. He wants you to full show up in your full greatness because he knows how great you are. And I go, and despite that, the food that he makes you, you have the best food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner so that you're getting the proper nutrients. He doesn't let you eat, you know, all the sugar and the stuff that you want to eat. He says no. And in your mind, you're thinking, oh, he's so hard on me because he says no, but he's doing it because he loves you because he wants you mm -hmm. to have you know, nutrition in your body. And, you know, he takes you here and he takes you there and, you know, he signs you up for sports. And by the end of this conversation, he's like, wow, dad really loves me. But, but as a little boy, as a little yeah. girl, we have these things that we perceive something as I'm not getting what I want from my dad. He's not yeah. giving me the sugar that I want, or he's not letting me just kind of get away with, you know, kind of calling it in. And we're calling them on it saying, come on, show up. You're great. You're a better student than this. And so the child could then say, my dad doesn't love me. And what if I wasn't there to say, what? That's insane. Right. He could have literally created an imprint that said, daddy, yeah. does, mommy loves me, but daddy doesn't love me. How lucky yeah. is he to have you as a mother? My God. I mean, you're clearly creating these new like synapses in, in their brains to have positive reinforcement and understanding. I mean, that's amazing. So beautiful. Thank you. But, but it just goes to show how quickly a yeah. decision like that. And sometimes we make decisions that aren't based in fact, yeah. right? And it's those parts of us that I run the show. We all do. That's the human part of it. That's the, we're talking about being human. I mean, we'd be lying if we said we didn't. 
right? We all yeah. have those moments where someone says something rude to us and it crushes us, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, or we lose something or we, you know, perceive losing something or we didn't get what we want. It didn't work out the way we wanted it to. And, <sighs> and those, you know, those are the moments where we have to work our energy and go, okay, let me feel the, instead of the judgment for myself or feel like I'm not good enough, let me feel compassion for myself because I'm having a human moment. <sighs> And I've worked so hard for this and, you know, and it's like, oh, they let me feel the compassion. Let me, and then let me connect with my divine self. Because if we go into the, the pit of the drama and the victim of nothing ever works out for me, you know, <laughs> I could have went there this morning. Oh my God. You know, but when we release that stuff and return back to the, to the divine, now we're including all of us in the wholeness. And that's what the desire factor is about. It's not saying, Oh, I want these things, but I can't. That's so materialistic. Well, being ma hello, we're material. We are literally physical part of energy, but we're matter. And whether it's a computer or a plant or a book, I mean, these are physical things that we have yeah. in our life, right? And this compassion that you talked about, like you just talking about like self-love, right? So like for me, when I when I have a goal, I'm like, the goals there. OCD bliss. <laughs> Wake up at 4 a.m. I'm up. Da, 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 da. No, Nicole, you're not tired. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Like, what's the difference between in your definition of like, okay, I need a break. I'm gonna love myself and have compassion versus like, okay, keep progressing. You can do it. Keep going. How did you how did you find that balance? Well, it, I had to learn that balance because I was one of those, I was those whippers. Come on, go faster, more, go, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, keep going. It was like, I was, I was, a, I was the horse and the whip and the, you know, all, and the whipper <laughs> all at the same time, right? I'm like, I don't want to go, you know, it was like, geez, get off my back lady, you know? And, it, and sometimes I would kid my husband, I'm like, my boss is being a real, you know, it's like, wait, I'm the boss. <laughs> Right. My schedule. <laughs> and I'll say that to myself, gosh, I was not kind with myself today with my schedule. Right. It's because I'm the one that schedules it. Yeah. So, you know, many years ago, I learned the hard way. I actually got really bad pneumonia because I was in the middle of a book launch. And this one is so different than six years ago when I, when I literally launched the art of having it all, boy, did I have it all. I had all sorts of great stuff going on, but I also had pneumonia oh, and wow. I, you know, it was like, I had it all. And oh gosh, right, right now I'm more, I'm more specific. I'd like to have all of it good. Um, but back then I learned that it's like, I have to consider myself, you know, because something might look really good on paper on a schedule. And, you know, when I get into that day, it's too much. I'm not giving mm. myself a break. And so I've really learned how to incorporate a lot of self-care and whether it's getting a massage once a week or, you know, going getting a manicure once a week or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. taking the time to meditate every day, what, what I have to make that time for myself, because what I know is the faster, you know, that driven go, go, go action. <sighs> yeah. It only takes you so far, but when you align and you allow the energy to go out in front yeah. of you, now it's like, let me just surf that, that energy wave. Instead of me having to create the wave, right? I I would love to one day dance with you. I mean, the way you're describing how you find this wave and this channel of energy, <laughs> you know, it's like, I like my background. I did theater for three years. I did Broadway. And it's like the way you're moving your body and how you're describing energy. It would be awesome to kind of do this like desire factor kind of movement together. I love it. You're right. You need that self-care and you need to pay attention to your energy, just like a dancer, understanding her breath, perception, space, how far she can go, practice, repetition, sleep, the discipline, the discipline of self-care. It's kind of ironic, but yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. And the overscheduling thing, I tend to do that too, especially when I'm attracting the abundance. So in your desire factor book, right? Taking the steps to get there all of a sudden I have all these meetings now. I have all these clients. I have all this abundance. And I'm like, ah, you know, what to do when you, when you level up and um, how to manage that. 
Well, that's all about, I wrote about that in Quantum Success that, okay. um, and if you don't have that book, I'll get it for you, but- um, Thank you. Will you sign it? Yes, of course, absolutely, I'd love to, yeah. It's, I mean, it's the chapter on pruning because as you level up, you know, it's kind of like as a tree grows higher, you know, all the stuff that's underneath that you got to prune it away as much as some of you might like it and love it. You know, it's like, there's, there's pruning that has to go. And, got it. and, and, you know, that's one of the things that I kind of warn people about is that when you really open up to your abundance, there's a lot of opportunities. Cause when you don't have a lot of opportunities and it's the only one you're like, okay, I guess I'll take it. Right. When you really open up your field, to a lot of different avenues coming in, that's where you really have to feel your way into. Does that one feel, that doesn't feel as much light. That one feels, I get really lit up about that, right? And to really understand and know, there's the dancing again, <laughs> to understand what, you know, what way to flow, what way to flow into energy and which one feels like, mm, it just doesn't feel like it's got as much light or as much momentum or mojo or whatever you wanna call it in that way. So I'm gonna let that go for now. You know? Got it. Thank yeah. you. That's yeah. helpful. Absolutely. Nicole, thank you so much for being here. And I'm so appreciative of you endorsing the book. You're amazing. And I love, I so love, I'm so grateful. I mean, 15 years ago, I was talking about, listen, to create your ideal body is not, it is about food and movement. It has to be because we're physical beings, but it also has to be incorporating the energy. So I love the fact that you are a fitness person that literally talks about the chakra, the energy system. So let everybody know where they can go get your app, first of all, where they can get in touch with you. I know that you've got your Instagram handle and Facebook. So just let them know everywhere that they can find you. Absolutely. Um, everybody, Nicole Winhofer again, and you can work out with me through the mind and body by downloading my app on the app store for iOS and Android for Google developer. And then my Instagram is at Nicole Winhofer. And last thing I want to say is if you haven't gotten Christy Whitman's book, Desire Factor, please get it. I'm not just saying it because, you know, I'm on here. I, I actually read it and it does help. It's very easy um, to digest. I think a lot of times metaphysical books become a bit more cerebral and hard to kind of apply to your actual life. But what Christy does is she opens up with her own life experience. And then she kind of steps you through one, two, three, four, a very digestible, easy to follow plan to get you what you want in life. And um, it, was, it was awesome. So definitely get the book. And Christy, thanks for having me on your show. <laughs> oh, so grateful you were here. So grateful to connect with you in this way. And so I just want to let everybody know that um, when you get the book, you get all sorts of bonuses. And in May, we're actually going to go live with the councils, four weeks of live sessions with myself and the council, going okay. through each of the different parts of the book. You actually get meditations and processes right away when you go buy the book. But we also have a special that when you um, get 10 books. You can give them away as gifts. You can donate them. You actually get 12 monthly sessions with the council. This is a $3,000 value that you get for $197. So each and every month you show up as a group, a council shows up and you literally have, you know, whatever you're working on, whatever your blocks are, whatever you feel limited by, um, you can ask them questions and they work with you with your energy. So you can go to the desirefactor.com 10, the number 10 books. So Nicole, thank you so much. Looking forward to connecting you in deeper ways. Thank you for the work that you're doing in the world because you really do make a difference because more people need to have this conversation of how important energy is as far as creating your ideal body. Mm, thank you so much, Christy. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.